Hello everybody! This time we'll see a book about networking and how to improve our social life. Never Eat Alone The author, Keith Ferrazzi, is widely acknowledged for his networking books that were New York Times bestsellers. Before we start, drop a like in the video and subscribe if you haven't done it already. Need for Relationships No one will succeed alone. No matter how smart we are, we need help from others. We don't fail because we lack resources, but because we isolate ourselves from people who will help us succeed. We have romanticized independence and technology. They can't replace human relationships. Nothing can guarantee that you will survive in difficult times, only the circle of your friends and associates. So build a community of people you trust before you need them. Generosity The key to success is generosity. If you help others, they will help you. Give before you take, but don't hold the score. Also, be open to accepting and asking for help. Try to find ways to give more and make others successful. If someone reports a problem to you, see it as a game to find a solution. Trust. People do business with people they know and trust. The best customers are the ones you already have. Everyone, from your family to the postman, is a gateway to more people. Trust is a marathon. It is slowly be gained by providing value and being reliable, kind and respectful. Mentor. Put successful people around you and ask them for advice and guidance. Find a mentor slash coach who is comfortable in groups and social. Take it with you and adopt his techniques. You can't reach the top without a coach. Leave your ego. The less you talk, the more you will listen and learn. One special kind of valuable people are super connectors those who know everyone. If you become friends with them, you are two points away from thousands of people. Extend your circle. It is valuable to talk to strangers and expose yourself to new experiences. Situations with a lot of people can make you feel uncomfortable, but it helps you make more friends. Small talk is the most important type of speech. Extend your circle. Join it with someone else's. The boundaries are fluid. When someone introduces you to a new person, acknowledge it. Don't give anyone free access to all your contacts. There must be reciprocity. You have 10 seconds to make the first impression, mainly not verbally. Don't be distant and show what you want to offer. Keep eye contact with relaxed arms and shoulders. Show interest, make them feel special and understand their point of view. Find common interest and mirror his body language to create rapport. Don't interrupt him when he talks and say his name during the conversation. This will help you also to remember it later. Prepare to meet. If you are going to meet someone, learn about his business, hobbies, challenges, achievements, beliefs, and what is his passion. Warming up a cold phone. Mention a person you know. Having a mutual friend makes you stand out from an anonymous one. Look in your social circle to find a person who will lead you to him. Express the value you offer. Show urgency and express the willingness to do what is necessary to meet the other. Accept any compromise to have at least a minimum follow-up. It doesn't matter only who you meet, but also where and how the encounter takes place. If you meet someone in the first class on the plane, they will consider you important, while if you meet him in a networking event, they will consider you desperate. It is also important what you do together rather than how often you meet. Prefer pleasurable activities, common passion, food and exercise. Make a list of activities you are passionate about and get people involved. You can also find one or two restaurants that you will like and go regularly. Meet the staff and owner and make it your home. Close with a specific follow-up proposal. Don't say, I hope to see you soon. The purpose of the phone is to meet face to face. Gatherings. Keep your social diary full and don't lose contact with friends and people you meet. If you can't manage to see them all, arrange gatherings where you can invite lots of them. The best opportunity to build a relationship is around food. Don't invite always the same people but include some new who you want to enter in your circle. Pay attention to the chemistry between individuals. Six to ten people at the table is ideal. If someone can attend due to another obligation, tell him to come before or after the dinner. Another good place for bonding is some kind of sport, which makes people lower than differences, or a particular club where people with common interests meet and lead to friendships that last for years. It is important to make others feel involved. Deep bumps. 
Sometimes you are at places when you don't have time for deep connection with other people. For example, conferences. There, you should use a method called deep bumps. Meet people, create enough connection to secure future meeting, and move on. You are not there to stick, but to ensure follow-up. In two minutes, look into each other's eyes, pay attention to what they say, ask questions that are be one work, and show a part of yourself. Vulnerability. Keep notes about the person you meet, what you've talked about, and how you plan to meet them in the future. Follow up. The author suggests keeping records of who you met, what they do, and what they are interested in. Make sure that he will not forget you. Give yourself a period of 12 to 24 hours after you meet him and send a message like, I'm glad to meet you. We need to keep in touch. You can also mention something you talked about when you met, so he will have a mental reminder of who you are. Make a reminder after a month to send him another message. Time matters. You must do that as soon as you can after the meeting. Make it a habit to follow up. Ping. 80% of relationships are just about keeping in touch. You can do that by making social pings. This concept is metaphorically rooted in the sonar used in some marines. A sonar ping is sent out and the operator listens for the echo return response to identify where the submarine is positioned in relation to surrounding objects. A social ping is any kind of communication which we use to get a social response or to keep a social bond. Make a thousand of phone calls just to say hello. For maintaining or developing a relationship, ping once a month. For close relationships, make one to two meetings a month. For secondary contacts, make two to three pings a year. Avoid pings on holidays when everyone does. Organize your contacts by importance, geography or industry and ping at every possible opportunity. The philosophy of the message. It's been a long time since we last met. I missed you. I consider you important. Relationships are like muscles. The stronger you work on them, the stronger they become. There is never an end in that procedure. My opinion about this book. Some suggestions that the author makes makes sound robotic and manipulative. But the main idea of the book is not to use techniques to fake your behavior in order to gain privileges. The goal is to organize your social life, provide more value to people around you, and create long-term relationships based on trust. Most social savvy people do those things naturally. My total rating of the book is 4 stars. I hope you find the video useful and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.